All right, sense of God. Don't just forget about all your troubles and your trials.
Now going back to what I said, I had originally told you that I might start talking about generosity on today. And I had fully intended to start talking about generosity uh, this morning. But I decided, well, before I, I take them into another series, because it's going to take us a while to go to generosity. <laughs> I'm going to park there for a while. How long are you going to park there, Brother Lou? We might be on generosity about four months, four or five months. Right. I want to make sure you get it right. All right. So we're going to be there for a little while. So I thought well, what I'll do today is I'll, I'll put a little break in here. And then my intention is actually to finish this lesson today. And uh, if I don't, we might have a little mini-series that we'll throw in here before we get into another extended series. But we're going to finish the thought today, and I, I wanted to say something. I, want, I wanted to encourage you. All right. All right. I, wanted, I wanted to encourage you. I wanted, if you are not a child of God, I wanted you to see what you're missing. Mm. Amen. If you are a child of God, I wanted you to appreciate what you have. And so I thought today, if it's all right with you, I wanted to just try to inspire and to encourage and to motivate and to lift your spirits as children of God so you can leave here with a greater sense of self. We don't want to have spiritual identity crises. We want to know who we are, embrace our identity, and experience the joy mm -hmm. that comes from our position in Christ Jesus. All right. I want you to get that today. Yeah. I want you to appreciate that today. And so I, I thought we'd spend today just trying to lift you up. Can, is, can I do that? Oh, yeah. all right. Is it all right? I just want to lift you up a little bit all right. and encourage you. You know, I want you to look at the Bible here. Go with me to John chapter 3. It was read in our hearing. And I appreciate so much Brother Marcus Turner for reading the passage. But look at what it says here. How great is the love. 1 John 3 and 1. Is everybody there? Yeah. Yeah. How great is the love. The Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. All right. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Mm. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. <laughs> these passages, these passages are a remarkable and marvelous passage. Amen. I usually, when I look at this text, I usually focus on verse number three, where it demonstrates the reason we don't have to suffer from ontological anxiety. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, the study of ontology is the study of being. And, and what verse three does is it, it, it relieves us of having ontological anxiety. I don't have to worry about who and what I be. But I want to look at something else today. These, these verses reveal an ascending development of insights. I need you to lean in and listen today. Are you listening? If you're listening, say I'm listening. I'm listening. I, I really need you to do this. Is rich. And it reveals in these three verses an ascending 
development of insights into our spiritual being. That's what these verses do for us. I want to thank Patrick for the song. When I was a boy, I was going to say this morning, when I was a boy, we used to sing a song, Oh, I Want to See Him. And uh, we don't really sing that much in the church today, but Patrick went and found it. And he brought it on in here today, and I appreciate that. Oh, I want to see him. Yeah. We sang that song this morning. But when I was a boy, we were singing that song, and I'm asking you to stay with me through the development of this text to experience a joy that awaits you at the end of this message. If you don't stay with it, you'll miss it. Now here's the funny part. If you miss it, it probably won't matter because you don't know it anyway. All right. All right. All right. But for those who get it, you are going to experience them properly. You are going to understand them. Those who get it will walk away with a rich appreciation for who they are and who God is, and they will have a newfound enthusiasm Amen. in their service for the Lord. Amen. He starts here, chapter 3, verse number 1. He starts here by calling your attention to an epiphany that is obtained by faith. An epiphany is the revealing of divinity, the revealing of deity, the, the revealing or the, the, the capacity to be able to see deity. He starts off on level one. Level one. Are you here? Are you with me? Because we have an ascending development. It, as, 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 ascending means it's constantly going up. We have an ascending development of insight acquired by faith. Level one. He starts off talking about sight by faith. Verse 1 talks about Christians. If you're a Christian, say amen. amen. He starts off talking about Christians having access to the presence of God now. All right. We have access to the presence of God by faith. When John says, Behold, the King James Version, the NIV starts with how great, but the King James Version starts off, Behold, look, witness this. A literal translation of the Greek, of which really translate something like this. John is saying, Behold how miraculous yeah, yeah. is the love of the Father which he bestowed on us, calling us the children of God. Yeah. That is, we are the children of God. He says, look, Amen. open your eyes. Witness this. Absorb this. Behold, he says, you are children of God. Is John saying that if I look really carefully, that things will start to materialize between my eyes and before my eyes? No, that's not what he's saying. Is John saying, listen for some audible voice? And that this audible voice, or, or should I look for some vision? That's not what Paul said. He is saying that by faith, it is literally possible for the reality of God to become more than just intellectual. We give intellectual assent to God. 
But brother, I would ask, don't you want more than that? When it comes to you and your relationship with God, don't you want more than that? Paul is saying, through your faith, you can actually experience the reality of God beyond just giving intellectual assent to his existence. It is possible for the realities of God to burst the boundaries, to overflow your intellect and actually flow into all of the rest of the areas of your life. Now that's a wild moment for me. I said that and everybody just said, look at me. For, for me, that's a wild moment. I don't have to just give intellectual assent. Paul is saying, John rather saying, look, Behold, you can actually right now experience the presence and the realities of God beyond intellectual ascent to where the presence of God, the reality of God, the existence of God can actually burst through your intellect and overflow into every area of your being. Your mind, your will, your emotions to the sense that you experience the presence of God and have the glory of God come down into your soul. Now that to me, that's, that's big stuff. That's big stuff. And so he says, and, 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 I, and I hope that you catch it this, because this is level one. Amen. Are you following me here? What John has given us here right now, we're talking about you and your relationship with God, God being real, and us experiencing the presence of God, the reality of God, not just intellectually, but through faith, I can allow God to birth through my intellect and I can actually experience him in my very essence and being. That's level one. That's exciting to me. All right. I don't just want to think God. I want to know God. And when I say he walks with me, he talks with me, he's always there beside me. He, he protects me. He shields me. He stands by me. When I say that, it's real. I experience the presence of God through faith as real as I experience the presence of Anthony in the flesh. That's number one. Don't you want to know God like that? What John says is, behold, how marvelous this is. Level two, he talks about our relationship. Verse two, maybe, maybe out of this experience of beholding God by faith. He says something in verse two that goes beyond that. Like I said, for me, just verse number one, is enough spiritually to make your mind just say, Phew. but in verse two, he says something that goes beyond that, and it is so astonishing that honestly, I almost get afraid to talk about it for fear of obscuring the glory that's actually in the text. This is so rich; I don't want to mess it up. In verse 2, he says, dear friends, which is really the Greek word that's used here for this is really a weak way to translate uh, 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 agapotoi, which is the word that's in the Greek that's translated here. He says, dear friends, but, 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 but he is saying, loved ones, he's saying, my beloved, my cherished. 
do you see the affection that's in this? It's richer than just dear friends. He's saying, my beloved, my cherished ones. He says, the, the, the ones who are dearest to me. He says, I want you to hear this now. We are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now John suddenly is moving into the future. He started out, first of all, talking about what we had and what we had by experiencing and seeing God and having him in our life by faith, but now he's moving into the future. And he's saying that I just shared with you that you can experience God in a manner that is just not intellectual ascent, but that you literally allow God to burst through your intellect and you feel him and experience him in the rest of your life, in your mind, in your will, in your emotions, in your very being, and it's expressed in your behavior. He says, now, that's pretty big in and of itself. He says, but get this. There's something even far greater than that in the future than what we're experiencing here right now. And like I said, I'm almost afraid to talk about this. This, this is I, I want to get it right. I don't know if I, can, if I have the capacity to properly articulate what I want you to see that's in my head. <laughs> Look at this phrase. He says, Beloved, we are children of God. But, he says, we're going to be something even more. What we know is, when he appears, we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, let's look at this. Let's, are you still with me? If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Now, let's look at this, just briefly. Let's look at this. First of all, don't overlook the fact that he says, Beloved, we are now. Everybody say now. now. Everybody say now. now. He said, Beloved, we are now children of God. Now we are. Take a diamond, there are multiple, there could be thousands of facets to a diamond, and you can look at it 
from all those perspectives, and they're all uniquely different, but they all focus on a common reality. They all show you a reality, in a sense, from a different perspective. I want us to look at this. Here is one more wonderful perspective. Wonderful definition of being a Christian. Are you ready? He says, and this is powerful. This, this is open. <laughs> This is a powerful perspective that you need to get a hold to and grasp and hold on to with all your hands. Mm -hmm. It says, be loved. A term of affection, endearment, my cherished. The ones that I love, you are now children of God. We Everybody say, are. are. We are. Everybody say it with me. We are. Are, are, are you feeling that? Yeah. This is present tense. Yeah. This is here right now. Yeah. This is my identity. Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. He says we are children of God. Are children of God. To be a Christian is not to try to be a child of God. Somebody ought to say amen. Being a Christian is not trying to be a child of God, but to be a child of God now. That's what we are. It's very typical for people to say something like, if you know, if you go to them and say, Well, are you a Christian? They'll have a tendency to say something like, I'm trying. <laughs> I think, are you, are you a Christian? Are you, are you a Christian? Brother Lee, I hope so. <laughs> no, 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 no. To say that shows that you don't really understand the nature of this. This little phrase teaches us you are now children of God. That little phrase teaches us what the Bible teaches us throughout it all. It teaches us that, it, that, that to be a Christian is primarily a standing. To be a Christian is primarily a legal position. Don't ever forget that. To be a Christian is about your standing in relationship to God, your legal position in relationship to God. He doesn't say, oh, we hope to be children of He doesn't say, oh, children of love, we are trying to be Children of God? No, he says, beloved, we are children of God now. Mm. Now, this is on top of the fact that through faith, I can experience the reality of God beyond just intellectual assent. Now, once you get that, that's pretty big. In and of itself. Then he moves on to emphasize. Now, if you understand that, get this. Amen. You are now children of God. You see, because Tanya and I have four children. My children are either my children or they're not. All right. All right. <laughs> Amen. Over 30 years ago, my wife and I adopted two beautiful baby boys. 
and to our family. All right. Now there was a moment at which those two boys became mm -hmm. our sons. Yeah. Yeah. Before that moment, they weren't. Then, after that moment, they were. There's no such thing as a 50% child. They are either my children or they're not. You know what they used to say, mama's baby, daddy's maybe. Well, that's just a joke. That's just a joke. I don't think like that. As Yoda, can I quote Yoda? As Yoda once said when Luke Skywalker, he said, well, I'll try. Yoda said, you are or you are not. There is no trying. And that's the way it is with Christianity. You are or you are not. There is no try. In fact, when people say, I had a bad week last week, Brother Lee, you know, I just don't know, I had a bad week. I don't know whether I was a Christian last week or not. <laughs> Amen. Get this. Your behavior, your attitude, that's not the primary thing when we're talking about this standing in relationship with God. In fact, if you want to be subjective about this, me sharing with you from my perspective about this, my sons were and are, when they were younger, when they were behaving, and, and even now, are behaving beautifully, when my sons are on top of everything and they're doing everything right and they're handling their business, they're paying their bills, they're handling their responsibility, I really don't feel much like a father. I'm really kind of just going along for the ride. And I noticed I left my daughter out of this scenario because my daughter never has issues. Yeah. You can't tell me there's not a difference between boys and girls. But those boys, okay. Now listen to this, listen to this. When my sons make bad decisions, when my sons exercise poor judgment, or just have issues in their life, or are in trouble for one reason or another, when my sons are not doing what I want them to do, I don't feel less like a father to them. If anything, I feel my fatherhood more so when my children are struggling, when my children are making bad choices, when my children are having issues, when my children are having problems, I experience my fatherhood more. When you look at that thing, it's, that, that, that's, that's really the way it works. I, I, I know, I, I look at them and I think to myself, when they're in trouble, when they're having problems, my, my initial response is <laughs> it, personal. I won't shit. But once I get past that initial response, <laughs> then my attitude is I need to be a father to these young men. These are my children, right? Yeah. That these are my children. I have to father my children, be available for my children, protect my children, stand with my children, lift up my children. When they're having trouble, that's when I experience my fatherhood. That's how it works because they're my children. Because they are legally my children. 
because it's their position as my children, because they are my children. I am in a covenantal relationship with my children. It's a contract. It's an obligation. It's a promise. And if anything, they might be the one saying, I don't feel very much like Geraldine's children right now. <laughs> hey, man. Isn't it because isn't that what we do? We're the ones talking about, I don't feel very much like a child of God right now. Hey, man. You don't lose. I'm really trying to help you. You really don't lose your status because you had a bad week. Verse 2. Beloved, loved ones, my beloved, my cherished, we are children of God. And notice one thing about what it means to be a Christian. We see that Christianity is essentially primarily a standing in relationship with God. It's a legal position or standing. Also, it's a legal position or standing that we receive. That's important. It's a legal position or standing we receive because, go to John chapter 1, if we receive it because it says in verse 1, how great is the love of the Father has lavished on us. The King James Version says, Behold how great is the love that the Father has bestowed on us. It's something we receive. It's a present. It's a gift. It's something that has been bestowed on you. Something that has been lavished on you. This is God's love we're talking about. And God loves us. When we become his children, when we receive him as our Lord, when we respond to Christ as our Savior, when we do what we need to do in relationship with our Lord, it says we will then be Mr. Actually being in a position to experience the things that relate me to God is actually a bestowal of God's love for me. The, the mere invitation, the mere knowledge that God has made this path available to me. Even before I understand the nature of the path, the fact that I'm exposed and I have access to God. I'm experiencing his love. This tells you I shouldn't have looked at those lights. <laughs> this tells you you have to receive this. It's, it's not automatic. Someone said, well, I don't know about that. I thought God loved everybody. I thought all people were God's children. All right. yeah. Yeah. Are you trying to say that only Christians are God's children with all I believe all people are God's children. There's some people who, who say that, yeah. that kind of idiotic thing. <laughs> there is, in a sense, which God has created everybody. He does love everybody. Yeah. Why? Because he loves his creation. Yeah. Of course we understand that. He loves his creation. Mm -hmm. But if you say that God is the Father of all people in that sense and that all it is everybody is a child of God you've really misunderstood how great being a child of God really is part of the peace in my life comes from growing to understand what it means to be a child of God Part of the, my ability to deal with the mess and the problems and the issues of life is me really growing to the point of understanding what it means to be a child of God. When you look at this 
He is our spiritual father. We have a spiritual relationship and a spiritual sonship with the father. And to say that anybody and everybody is, is a child of God because he created them is to not understand being able to understand the word of God. This is something we received in John chapter 1 and verse number 12. Notice what it says here. Yet to all who received him. Yet to all who received him. We have to receive what he has available for us. A lot of us are resistant to what he has for us to receive because we still are stuck in ourselves. I was talking to my wife this week. I was telling her, I, I, I've had a hard last few weeks of trying to make some decisions. One of them, dog, let me not talk about that. <laughs> but I narrowed it down to, I'm trying to decide whether to close my practice now. The struggle is that my practice is an expression of me. But Perry West, that is me. Serving God. And I told my wife my struggle is I gotta choose between the Lord or me. Come on now, you know you have the same struggle. There's a tension in everybody that is here. Everybody here has a tension where there is a struggle, a tension, because you're constantly having to choose between me or the Lord. When do you have this right? You have, he says, Read, read the Bible, Anthony. Just read, get, read the Bible for me. Yet to those, yet to all who receive. Yet to all those, and I lean and get this. Yet to all those that what receive. You have got to receive it. You have to be open and receptive to it. He says to those who receive it, to them who believed in His name. Who believed in His name? He gave the right. He gave the right. To no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Being a child of God gives you rights. Well, what does that mean, rights? If you take a look at what the Bible is saying here, when the Bible talks about giving you rights in the New Testament days, we've talked about this before when we studied through Romans chapter 8. When a adult was adopted, do you remember what we said happens? Let's just say there's a great man who owns a great estate and he knows he's going to die and he has no living heirs. And so what he wants to do is a, a adopt a living adult. When he adopts that living adult, the minute he adopts that living adult, what happens? All of his debts are clean. All of his debts are canceled or the person who adopted the adult adopts the debts. They come to the father. If the adult child had debts when he became adopted, whatever debts that adult child had, whatever issues that adult child had, they now belong to the Father. All debts are cleared. And that's one of the person's rights. Yet to those who receive, come on. To those who believed. In to his those name. who believed in his name. He gave the right. He gave the right to become, to children, become of God. children of God. Now here's something else that happens. When you are adopted by God, you have tremendous 
access. If you are the daughter or the little girl of the President of the United States, there is nobody in the world, even in a sense probably not even his wife, that has the kind of rights that little girl has. You could be the president of the USA, but if your baby girl wakes up at 3 a.m. and cries out, Daddy, I need some water. Even if your wife woke up at 3 a.m. and shook you and said, I think I need some water. <laughs> the president would probably say, get up and get it yourself. <laughs> but that little girl wakes up crying, Daddy, I want some water. Daddy's going to get up out of and go and get that baby some water. Like you're a very important man. He would get up and do what needed to be done. Access like that comes to you as a right. As children of God. That's what that little girl has. I know Sonny has shared with me and his mother how that there were many nights when his last two little girls, Dominique and Gianna, were uncomfortable being in the room at night and Sonny would sleep on the floor beside the bed at night because one of the two girls didn't want him to leave the room. They didn't want to be in the room at night with our daddy. And you know what? No matter what kind of week she had had, No matter how much trouble she had gotten into. No matter how bad she's been that week. And no matter how important he was or is as the man of his household, no matter how busy, that little girl has rights. Bear that with us. Your debts are canceled when you became children of God. You have access to God even when you had a bad week. When Jesus prayed for us, there's one more thing. When Jesus prayed for us, I'm not going to ever finish this. What time is that? I got derailed talking about my business. Okay, it looks like it's going to be a mini-series. <laughs> what it's going to be. It's going to be a mini-series before we get into the big series. But there's one more thing. When Jesus prayed for us to the Father, he said in good John 17 and 20, he said, Father, I really need you to lean in and listen to this. Are you listening? If you're listening, say I'm listening. I need you to get this. I want you to leave Philip better than you did coming in here. Amen. Notice what he says here. What he's telling you, he's saying, Father, I want them, talking about us. He says, Father, I want them to have the same love that you gave to me. All right. I want you to love them even as you have loved me. John 17, 20, the Bible says what? My prayer, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also, I pray also for those who will, who will believe, believe in me through, through their message. Read. That all of them. That all of them may be one, Father. Just like right. you and me. And we do. are one and I'm in you. And you and me. May they also be in us. So that the world may believe, believe that you sent me free. I have given them the glory. I've given them the glory that, that you me. gave to me. That they, that they may be one, one just like we are one. Read. I am them. 
I and them, you and me, you and me may they be brought to you complete unity. So let the world know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me, just like you loved me. And it is the parent of the, it's the, it is the job of the parent who adopts children into a family. It's the job of the parent who adopts another child to say, I will love you as I love my natural children. That's the job. That's what you sign up for. And for many of us, it's easy for some, many even fail at doing that, but we love our adopted sons. We have two adopted sons, and we love them as our natural children. When you adopt a child into your family, you tell them, I'm going to love you just like I love my own children. You see, me understanding my role in relationship to the adoption of my children helps me to understand my relationship with my father. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, I, I have two adopted boys. I made that promise. We made that promise. We're going to love you just like we love our natural born children. That's the job we signed up for. We picked up two beautiful two month old babies and they're 32 years old now. And we've been loving them every day, even when they had bad weeks. Guess, the, guess what? The Heavenly Father won't fail. Amen. That means when the Bible says, Beloved, my beloved ones, my beloved cherished ones, we are now children of God. That means God loves you. Oh, you should be, your heart should be getting full. You, you should be getting emotional right now because you know how bad you are. <laughs> and God loves you now every bit as much as he loves his natural son. When you receive Christ by believing in his name, and you can't accomplish that without a change of your heart towards your previous life, your conviction of his person, your desire to submit to obedience, to be baptized, where you are given the Holy Spirit, and you acquire a new status, a new standing, a new legal position with Christ. You are then loved, even as the Father loved his natural son, and you know what? You just want to go out and tell everybody in the world how good he is. How does he love his natural son? Think about it. The Bible says he's the fairest of 10,000. He's the one who marched into hell for heavenly causes. He's the one who marched into hell to obey his father's will. Well, how much does a father love his natural son? You can hardly even begin to imagine how much a father... Think about your children. How much you love. You got a son, you have a daughter. How much do you love? I used to tell my wife, in Terrell, Texas, they used to have a, a, a Terrell State Hospital. I don't know if you're familiar with Terrell State Hospital, but Terrell State Hospital is a mental facility. But I used to tell Tanya years ago, when our kids were little, I said, if anything ever happened to these kids, just take me on over. <laughs> Amen. I said, that's the one thing I don't know. Because of the love I have for my children. God loves you as much as he loves his natural son. You can hardly imagine this verse. He's telling you that God loves you if you are a child of God now. He loves you like that. The moment you became a child.
child of God, he loves you like that. Regardless of if you had a good or bad week, he loves you like that. And if you think about it, you know what that means? God won't be able to love you anymore a billion years from now when you are perfect and glorified in his presence that he loves you right now. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. He couldn't do it. Because when you were adopted, and I'm going to close here, I'll wrap it up. We'll have a short one next Sunday. When you were adopted by God, he was saying, I'm going to love you just like I love my natural son. Yeah. And I'm going to love you that way. Now, Amen. Amen. we are, everybody say now. now. We are now the children of God. We are not trying to be. <laughs> we are not trying to be children of God. We are now. Isn't that great? Isn't that incredible? Isn't that exciting? You are now. Everybody say now. Right now, you are God's child. And he loves you like that. He loves you just like he loves his natural son. Believe it or not, now he tells us, but there's something that goes beyond. That was level two we just looked at. He told us in level one, now if you open your eyes through faith, you can experience the presence of God's reality in your life. That's level one. That, <laughs> just getting past level one is I've got to wrap my mind around that. But then he says, but now, can we, guess what? Once you wrap your mind around that and you receive him by faith and you are his child, you are right now as much love as his child than you will ever be in the existence of God or you. And right now, you are trying, you are his child. That should just make you feel so much better. He says, but guess what? There's more beyond that. And we'll talk about that next time. Do you feel a little lighter? Do you feel a little lighter? Feel a little encouraged? Say amen. amen. I don't want you to know God's word and experience what God's word has to provide for you so that you can walk through your life with the right understanding of what this faith walk means and what it actually looks like. Not as defined by various people in the world, but just looking at God's word and understanding what God's word is telling you about your standing. Your position, you don't lose it. Dennis and Daryl, if, if, you, if you could lose standing, they would have been clipped many times again in the ring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you know what? As a father, clipping never crossed Amen. my mind. Amen. When they got in trouble, Oh, I, I don't know about you, I mean, the rest of you, man. You know, I, I, lo I love being a father. I told my kids years ago, I said, I've had a lot of titles in my lifetime. I've been assistant to the president, director of admissions. I've been uh, a professor of psychology. I I've had a lot of titles. But the one that really gets me going and gets my juices flowing is Daddy. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. That is that title, Daddy. <laughs> when my kids got in trouble, either the natural born or the adopted, it didn't matter. Superhero emerged. Did <laughs> you hear this boy? And you have failed to appreciate 
the position and standing, legal standing you have with God, and you've been burdened down. And you've allowed life to distract you because you've lost your long-sightedness, you're short-sighted, and you're looking at the stuff around you instead of at the stuff that's before you. I'm encouraging you, if you are a child of God, and you just need to, to rededicate yourself, recommit, and ask God to continue to enlighten you and, and encourage you and motivate you and illuminate your sight so that you can see like Elijah had to do with Elijah. Open their eyes so they can see. Then come down and ask for prayer. If you're not a part of the body of Christ, you're not a child of God, you can be. By believing that God loved you enough to put a plan in place before the creation of the world. He sent a son that penetrated our reality. Emerged as vulnerable as anyone could be as a baby. A baby. But this baby rose to be the Lord and King. And if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and are willing to be baptized, surrendering yourself from your will to be available to his will alone. When you come out of that water, you'll be a child of God. And from that moment going forward, there are rights that you have as a child of God. There is standing that you have as a child of God. You have access. Because you are a child of God. When you get this in your mind and understand who you are, you just walk a little taller. Yeah. Yeah. And you work a little harder. Not because you're trying to earn anything, but because you love the Lord back who first loved. You're here, you need to respond in any manner. I would ask all our leaders to come. All of our leaders to come forward at this time. And we want to include, uh, uh, I want to thank uh, the brother for the prayer. Brother, help me out. Montgomery did the prayer, and he mentioned the elders, and he mentioned the associate ministers, but he failed to mention the deacons. We, we love and appreciate our deacons as well. And I know that was just an oversight, but their part of this leadership that we love our deacons. These men are standing here. They're not just standing up here because they want to show you they're impotent. They're impotent. No, that's not why they're standing here. They're standing here because these are men who want to stand between the gap, between the world and Christ, and they want to be there to help escort you in whichever way they can to be in that legal standing and position with God. They are here to serve you. And when you walk forward, one of them will walk up and approach you and grab your hand, and they will start working with you. If you need prayer, they'll start praying with you. If you need to just confess something, they'll start listening to you and giving you direction. If you have questions, they will going to respond to you right now. That's why they're standing here. These men are here to make themselves available as the portal or the gate to the access that God is trying to provide for you. If you're not a child of God, and these are men to help work you, work with you for the access access you have with God to improve your, your attitude about your standing with relationship to God himself. They're here to serve you. Amen. That's why they're standing here. They're standing here to be available for you. Now here's the issue. Because I know you're struggling just like I am. I love what I do. Amen. I've been doing it a long time in my practice. Over 20 years. But really, boy, that really kind of makes me feel better about myself. You know what I do over there, that job I have over there, I feel real good about me. You don't have any black therapists. Oh, somebody say amen. I am a licensed black therapist. I don't have a lot of those. But that's stroking my ego. I'm honest. I can be honest. That's stroking mine. That makes me feel real good about myself. <sighs> but it's an expression of who I am from Paraland West. It's an expression of my ministry. I service the Houston community just like I service my people here at Paraland West. But this is my love. This is my heart. Serving God. Studying God's word. Can you imagine just being able to study God's word more day by day? I can just come in the office and just model God's word. 
Just mull over a thought drinking coffee. Oh, that does that sound good? <laughs> But I gotta let something go to do that. So I've gotta choose between me, my pride, my ego. Because I, we, we've grown as a church to where I need to be available now. You see, do you see my dilemma? We've grown to I need to be attending to God's business. So for us to get to the next level. So I'm grateful for what the Lord has done for us, but I've created attention for myself. Amen. I've got to choose between me or the Lord. Amen. But guess what? That's exactly where you are, too. Amen. 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 That's exactly where you are, too. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you need to come, I'm begging, pleading. Pay attention to who you are. Appreciate who you are. Enjoy and love the lavishing of God's love on you and respond in a manner that says, Lord, I've taken you for granted, but I'm available now to serve you the way you deserve to be served. Not trying to be a child of God, but because I am your child. You need to come and do it now. That's together we stay. I give myself away. Everybody sing, everybody sing. Oh, I, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Forget about all your troubles and your trials.